I'm here with Josh Turner of Linked Selling. And Josh, we had a conversation earlier about uh, cold emailing and we had some discussion about that and some people wrote in some, some questions on that basis. But let's clarify something first. You talked about uh, emailing people that have not heard of you before. And so this is different than permission-based emailing. But, yeah. but can you talk a little bit more about the difference between sure. cold emailing and permission-based email marketing? Sure, sure. So with permission-based email marketing, you know, somebody opts in for something and then you have their permission to send them emails on an ongoing yes. basis, potentially for months, years, their entire life if they stay opted in, yes. right? Well, with, with cold emailing, you're actually, you're trying to get somebody to agree to something like a phone call or a sales meeting or something to that effect. And you're, you're going out and finding their email and then putting your message in front of them, but you're not gonna do it more than a couple times. Okay. So it's really just reaching out to somebody and then maybe a follow-up, maybe a third message at most. So um, the idea basically is yeah. to throw out a net and see which fish want to come into your net. Sure. Uh, getting them to saying, hey, would you like to raise your hand? Would mm -hmm. you like to be a part of what we're doing? Yeah. And so you're putting yourself in front of them once or twice, not forever, and that's that's the distinction. Absolutely. I mean, and the, the last thing you'd want to do is go out and find a bunch of people's email addresses and then just import them into your marketing software and add them to a, a long-term campaign. Right. You know, that'll, yeah. that'll sink your ship pretty quickly. Yeah. Well, that begs the question, how do you get a decent list of sure. proper email list, mm -hmm. email addresses, and how do you do it without spending forever and a day getting right. it done? Right, right. Well, I'll tell you, when I first started executing on this kind of a lead generation strategy for my business, I was paying somebody to manually find email addresses mm -hmm. for companies that fit a profile of the type of person I wanted to talk okay. to. And that is very inefficient. And you, in the process that, that we were using is literally going out and looking for companies that were a fit and then finding email addresses on their website or email addresses that they had put on a Craigslist posting. Okay. One at a time manually. Well, um, I'd say, you know, within the last couple years, I discovered some software that's relatively affordable that does that for you. Okay. And there's a couple types that I would recommend people look into if they're interested in this sort of thing. Um, the, they're both by a company called eGrabber. One of them is called Lead Grabber Pro. Okay. Which is a more uh, high-end solution for, you can import a set of uh, different terms. You could say, hey, I want this kind of industry, these size companies this kind of seniority level, this kind of position title. Yeah, yeah. And the software goes out and builds databases based on that. It's not as automatic as I just made it sound. There still is a manual component to managing the software, um, but it can be effective at grabbing a lot of data quickly and building big prospect lists, including emails, phone numbers, and mailing addresses. Um, so you give it the constraints. Yes. And then it kind of goes out and does the hunting for you sure. so that you don't have to pay somebody to sure. just do it one by one. Yeah. And, and there's other software that does that. That's just one example. I'm not familiar with, with how the others work because that's the one that we use. Okay, uh, sure. But another another one that people could check out is by the same company, eGrabber, and it's called Account Researcher. And it's more affordable. Uh, they have a monthly fee option that's less than $100, I believe. But with that software, instead of compiling huge databases based on queries, it does it one at a time. So if you know that you want to get in with John Smith at XYZ Company, you can put his name in there in XYZ Company and hit find data, and it goes out and queries the web okay. and pulls the data in for you for one, one particular person. So as long as you know the domain... No, you don't. You, you don't, just know the name and the company. Name and the company. Okay, yeah. and then it goes in and finds that for you, so you yes. don't have to go find the company, drill down to the proper page, and right. etc. So that kind of begs the next question. Once right. you have your list, sure. How do you develop a message or mm -hmm. a series of messages that yeah. are effective for your particular business? Sure. Well. Um, I'll tell you, I didn't invent the approach that I'm just going to recommend. It was okay. a real eye-opener for me when I read a book by a guy named Aaron Ross called Predictable Revenue. Okay. And I would highly recommend it to, to anybody that's trying to learn how to really do this stuff. Um, and when I first started doing uh, outreach to try and generate business via email, I would go the sales pitch route and get very little response. What I learned from Aaron was is that the most effective strategy 
for getting a response is to ask for a referral and to go as high as possible in the company. Regardless of if you want to talk to the CEO or not, email the CEO and ask him, who's the appropriate person for me to contact regarding whatever you want to do? Okay. And it is amazing how effective it works. Now, I'm not going to say it's a 90% successful strategy, but integrated with a, you know, a broader campaign can be really, really effective. And when you, start, when you try and pitch somebody, they don't, they don't go for it. But when you ask them, hey, can you help me and refer me to the right person, a lot of times they're willing to do that. Okay. And then the next step is the person that the CEO referred you to can hardly say no to responding to your email because the CEO referred you to them. Okay. And so really what you want to do is try and craft an initial message that just asks the person, hey, who's the appropriate person for me to talk to in your company about this? Whatever it is that you're trying to achieve, whatever sure, the right department sure. is, that kind of thing. Sure. That, make, that makes a lot of sense. You had also talked about something else earlier. Uh, we were familiar a little bit with the with the Can Spam Act. Right. Very briefly, can you tell us what the Can Spam Spam Act is? Sure. Uh, but more importantly, how do you make sure that what you're doing, yeah, in this process is compliant with mm. the Can Spam Act? Right. So Can Spam are the regulations in the United States. Um, that are essentially the regulations for you know basically what businesses should be doing regarding email to be not spamming people mm -hmm. more or less right sure um, that's important yeah and unfortunately there is no international law um, so really from country to country it's different but in the United States it's called can spam and there are there's a, a number of different things you have to watch out for um, some of the big ones are that your subject line can't be misleading. Mm -hmm, you have sure. to include your business address in the email. You have to somehow identify the email as an advertisement or solicitation. Okay. There's some flexibility in there, though, where you can be creative about how you do it. You don't have to start your email off with, This is an ad. Right. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Um, and you have to give them a clear way to opt out. Yes. So if they don't want to hear from you again, they have to have a way to opt out. Yes. Uh, there's rules regarding that you have you are responsible for things third parties do on your behalf. So, for example, if you were to hire a marketing company that would go out and do a bunch of illegal stuff, you as the business owner that hired them have to be responsible for that. Um, there's a lot more. We have a we have a one page guide on our website at linkselling.com forward slash can spam that goes into more details. But uh, those are some of the big ones that people have to watch out for. I can see that using this whole process of cold emailing is uh, attractive, could be very effective. And we talked about this puzzle piece of the can spam. And I can imagine some people might say, oh, I don't want to go through all that trouble. So very briefly, what are some of the downsides if you don't pay attention to those can spam rules? Well, you know, the, the biggest downside, I think, aside from going to jail and getting fined, <laughs> Uh, her, and I don't know. I'm not, up, to, I'm, not, I'm not up for the for that today, are you? No, no, <laughs> I'm not up for that. But, you know, um, those are pretty big downsides. I would say that one of the other ones you have to really watch out for, too, is not to go too crazy so that if enough people mark you spam, regardless of if your messages can spam compliant or not, mm -hmm. then that can really hurt the deliverability of your future emails sure, from whatever sure. domain or IP they're being sent from or service provider or whatever it might be. Um, but aside from that, there are fines per instance or per violation of can spam that are pretty substantial. So a business that goes on for a long time violating those rules can get themselves into a, a lot of trouble potentially. Well, that's, that's terrible. But we've talked about how to do the, the uh, cold emailing right. and how to develop a message that yeah. is likely to get good results for you. And then, of course, pay attention to the can spam rules. Absolutely. And you'll be well on your way to getting more leads, making more sales, and that's what we're all about. Yep. Josh, thanks for joining us today. You bet. Okay.